Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can get started with Raycast, which is a powerful launcher app specifically for the Mac. I'm going to be explaining some of the features that you can use in Raycast and some of the ways I've customized it to make my life a lot easier. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. Now, let me briefly explain what Raycast even is. What do I mean by a launcher app? Well, if you're a Mac user, you may have used the Spotlight feature on the Mac. If you press Command Space, you can open Spotlight. And this is a search feature that allows you to find files, contacts, and other things on your Mac. It can open applications and just help you to find information very quickly. Raycast is very similar to Spotlight, but it's a lot more powerful and a lot more customizable. And so I think of Raycast as almost like a Swiss army knife. It can do all sorts of different things. It does the work of lots of different apps all inside one tool, which you'll see in this video. It's similar to apps like Alfred, if you've seen Alfred before. In fact, I have been an Alfred user for a very long time. I probably started using Alfred back in 2015. I love Alfred. But when I saw Raycast, I downloaded it to give it a go. And I have to say, I was convinced to switch to Raycast in about 15 minutes. I'm not exaggerating. Just the design, the interface, and the different customization options that I had, I really liked, and I was instantly hooked. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid by Raycast. I'm just giving my honest opinion based on my personal user feedback. Now, to get started with Raycast, you simply want to go to raycast.com, and you can download the app to your Mac from the homepage. Now there's a lot I want to cover in this video, so I'm gonna now skip ahead to having Raycast installed on my Mac. With Raycast downloaded, I've now opened the app and I'm now greeted with the, the Raycast kind of input window. Now from here, I'm gonna use the command comma shortcut to open up the Raycast preferences. Now the first thing you're probably gonna to want to do is go to the general tab here, and you can see I've enabled the option to launch Raycast at login, so the app automatically opens, when I start up my computer, I want it just ready to go. I've also changed the default Raycast hotkey and I'm using the command space shortcut on my Mac and I'm actually gonna replace uh, the shortcut for Spotlight. Normally Spotlight will use the command space shortcut. So what I've done is in my Mac's system preferences, I'm in the system settings here, if you come down to keyboard and then go to keyboard shortcuts and then Spotlight, you can see for show spotlight search, I've changed the shortcut here to um, the control or sorry, option space key. So if I just double click in here, I can then do the shortcut option space. And so now I've updated spotlight. So it works from option space and Raycast works using command space. So now I still have access to spotlight, but my default command space is gonna launch Raycast. You can also adjust any of the other settings in here if you want to change the text size of Raycast, if you want to default to light, dark, or to mimic your system settings. I just like to mimic my system. And you can enable either a, a large Raycast window or the compact window, depending on whether you want to see sort of prompted inputs and things like that. And so with my settings ready to go, I'm just gonna close the settings screen. I'm gonna press Command Space, and now I've opened Raycast. Now let me show you some of the simple things that Raycast can do. If I want to find a file or a document on my computer, I can type some kind of keyword, like the word invoice here, and you can see there are all these sort of prompts that are, or areas that I can search. I can search my files here. I could choose to search for this keyword in Google if I want to run a Google search. I could define this word if I want to look up uh, the dictionary definition. But I'm just going to search files, so I'm going to click this option here. And this is going to find me all these different documents with the word invoice in it. And you can see down the bottom right there are a few options. I can either hit return on my keyboard to open the document, or if I press command K, I can bring up this options menu where I can perform different actions. I can open the document, I can find the document in my finder, I can quick look the document, I can open it with a certain app, uh, I can perform all sorts of things, moving it, copying it, duplicating it, copy the name, finding the path, move to the trash. So Raycast will actually help me to you know, perform different actions based on this document. I use Raycast to open basically any app on my Mac. 
I actually don't use my dock and I definitely don't use this launch pad thing, which I really don't like. Uh, instead, I'll open Raycast and I can do this from anywhere. Even if I'm in Safari or in a document, I can open Raycast from anywhere. I can type in uh, a couple of characters and I can find the app that I'm looking for, hit return, and that's gonna open the app that I'm looking for. So very quick way of just getting to the apps that I need to use. Another feature I find myself using dozens of times a day is the built-in calculator and the conversion feature. So I can perform any calculation. I can say, you know, one, two, three times four, five, six, seven. I can perform a calculation like this. And you might be watching this thinking, yeah, but Spotlight can do that. Yes, it can. But when I hit return, it's gonna copy that search result to my clipboard. Now I can paste that result exactly where I need it. If I were to do that in Spotlight, if I hit return, it opens the calculator. There it is. Uh, I find this kind of pointless because I've already seen the result. I don't need the calculator. What would be more useful is what Raycast does, which is just copying the result to my clipboard. So small, subtle difference there, but I find Raycast much more useful. I can also use Raycast to perform different conversions. So I can do one km in miles. There we go, I can, I can do currencies, I can do distances, lengths, any type of kind of lots of different types of units and things you can convert. And again, hit return, I've now copied that result to my keyboard. And if I ever need to, if I type the word calculator or start typing it, I can actually go back and find my calculator history. So here are all the old calculations and conversions that I've done. If you're like me, sometimes you'll need to refer back to numbers you've, you, you've calculated previously. And so again, really useful having that history right under my fingertips. Now at the start, I said, one of the things I really like about Raycast is that it's more customizable. And so any of these actions that you can perform in Raycast, you can actually access and trigger those actions quicker by assigning the action either an alias, which is like a keyword that you can assign to that action, or you can apply a hotkey. For example, one of the features of Raycast I really like is that it can store my clipboard history, which is really useful for going back and finding text and links and email addresses that I copied, you know, an hour or a day or even a week ago. For example, if I have this text here in a note, I can copy this and press Command C on my computer. And now if I open Raycast and type the word, uh, start typing clipboard history, I can bring up the history and you can see there is the text that I copied and here is text from uh, text and numbers and things that I've copied recently. I can even search my clipboard history. If I type the word pipe drive, you can see it's finding any text or links with the word pipe drive in it. So really useful feature. However, I don't really like having to type the word clipboard every time. I'd like to get quick access to that clipboard history feature. So if I go to my Raycast settings by uh, pressing command comma, under the extensions tab here, you can find all the different actions and tools built into Raycast. And so here is the clipboard history feature. And you can see I can trigger the clipboard history either by assigning this action an alias so if I want to put a word uh, or trigger the clipboard history through some kind of keyword, I can type an alias in here, or I can record a hotkey. For example, I could say control option space. And so now all I have to do is press control option space and it takes me straight to my clipboard history. I don't have to type in that word clipboard. And so I've assigned hotkeys and aliases to some of the actions that I perform quite often. For example, searching emojis, I've assigned command option space. So if I do command, uh, sorry, control command space. So there we go, I can find an emoji and I can type the name of um, the emoji that I'm looking for. Now, as well as these more basic features like being able to search for files, contacts, or open applications, which you can do all of that with Spotlight, Raycast also has a lot of additional features that you can't do with the normal Spotlight feature. For example, one of the things I can do is type the word schedule and I can open my calendar schedule. Or you can see here, I've actually assigned the alias Cal. So that's a shortcut for the word calendar. I can type Cal and I can see this summary of my day, my next appointment and my upcoming events. And if I press command K, again, I can perform different actions on this calendar event. I can also run shortcuts on my Mac. So this is the shortcuts app where I've got different shortcuts for helping me throughout my day. One of the ones actually is sometimes I need to FaceTime my colleague Warwick. And so I can trigger this shortcut 
simply by typing the word FaceTime. And you can see again, I've assigned an alias. So if I just type face, I can then choose to FaceTime Warwick or Lindsay. So rather than having to open the FaceTime app, start new FaceTime, call Warwick, I can just, you know, command space, face, FaceTime Warwick, and I can run that shortcut directly from Raycast. I can also create Apple Reminders or Apple Notes. And it's kind of funny that this isn't actually possible in Spotlight, but it is with Raycast. So if I type the word Reminder, you can see I can open the Reminders app. I can see a summary of my upcoming Reminders, or I can create a Reminder. So directly from here, I can put in the name of my Reminder. I can choose a due date. I can assign a priority, put it onto a particular list, and instantly create this Reminder from Raycast without having to open the Reminders app separately. I could do this from anywhere. And again, just to remind you, if I want to get really quick access to be able to create a new Reminder, in my extensions, I can come into the Reminder settings here, and for the Create Reminder action, I could assign a hotkey like Control, Command, I'll do the plus sign or equals there. And so now I can do that shortcut from anywhere and quickly get to this screen without having to go through that search. Now, a feature that I use dozens of times a day is the quick links feature in my extensions. Now this allows me to create a quick link to a document, to a folder, or even to perform searches on the web using an alias. So for example, I've created one called search YouTube. To create a quick link, what I'm gonna do is open Raycast and type the word quick link, and I'm gonna use the create quick link command. Now what I can do is give this a name, so I'm gonna call it search YouTube. And in here, I'm gonna put the search URL, which I'm gonna find by going to my browser. So here is the, uh, here's YouTube. And if I just do a quick search, let's just search for Asana. I've now performed a search in YouTube. Now the way most search uh, functions work on websites is that the website will go to a particular URL like uh, question mark search query equals, and then you can see there, that is the query that we've just searched for. So I'm gonna copy this address. I'm now going to, let's go back to quick links. So create quick link, uh, search YouTube. I'm gonna paste that link in there, but I'm gonna remove that word Asana and I'm gonna type the um, query parameter in here. So you can see here, include an argument by inserting query in the URL. And so whatever I type into Raycast, Raycast is gonna add that to this URL and search this URL. And I'm gonna run this search via uh, Safari, which is my default browser. And so now if I go back to my um, extensions, you can see here's the quick link that I've already created and I've assigned the alias YouTube. So the way this works is I can open Raycast, I can type the word YouTube, which is my alias, and then a space. And you can see I, I can now type my query. So let's search pipe drive. I'll search that, it's gonna open my browser it's gonna perform the search in YouTube and you can see it's searched for the word pipe drive. It's filled that URL. And so now I'm looking for videos related to pipe drive. Look, there are some of mine, great. So quick links, really useful way to get out uh, to do searches. So I use this for things like searching YouTube, Vimeo, but I also perform searches on my own WordPress website. For example, searching for customer email addresses, orders, pages or posts that I've created. I can even search payments in my Stripe account, subscribers in my ConvertKit account. So I can run all sorts of searches across the web. I can also apply quick links to documents that I want to access on a regular basis. One way that I could do this is if I search for a file, let's look for Asana proposal template. So there's my Asana proposal template document. I'm gonna hit Command K to bring up the actions. And now I'm gonna go down to create quick link. So I'm creating a quick link to this particular um, file. So I'm gonna create that quick link. Now, if I hit escape, go back to the, the, the root menu, go back to my settings, I can find there's the quick link to the document that I just added. And now I, if I assign, a uh, again, an alias like template, so now I can simply type the word template and rather than having to go into you know, searching files and finding it, just by assigning that alias, I can quickly find and open that document. There really is so much that Raycast can do. I'm not gonna go through everything here, but I encourage you to jump in and have a look at some of these things. For example, you can perform system commands like quickly emptying your trash, 
quitting applications, restarting or shutting down your computer. You can also arrange windows. If you want to move windows to the left half, right half, you can get your screens and windows looking exactly the way that you want. You can even create snippets. I use a separate app uh, called Text Expander for this, which I've made many videos about. Um, but if you want to store text snippets for things like email templates or links uh, that you want to get quick access to, you can store those in here. Again, this is an example of Raycast being able to replace a lot of different apps that you might use. Raycast can help me with screenshots and I can even perform translations if I want. Now don't go anywhere because I want to show you one final feature in Raycast, which is that you can install third-party extensions that other developers have created for their apps that you can then run inside Raycast. For example, an app that I use all the time on my Mac is CleanShot X. This is a screenshot and rec video recording app. Uh, you can run it from your browser. So I can quickly take screenshots. I can record areas of my screen. I can annotate those images. It's a really powerful, useful app. Now, somebody, not even the CleanShot team, has created an extension to run CleanShot actions from Raycast. So from the Raycast website, you can find all sorts of extensions under the developer menu here. I found this CleanShot one. I can, you can click here to install this. And once I install it to Raycast, you'll notice the extension appear in the extensions menu of your settings. And if I expand this, I can see all the different types of actions I can perform in CleanShot from Raycast. And one of the things I've done is I've assigned this alias, CS, to quickly start recording my screen. So if I type CS, you can see it's gonna then say, right, record screen. I can now drag an area of my screen I can change my different clean shot settings. I can hit record. And now I'm really quickly recording a video using clean shot. But again, I didn't have to open the app. I just ran that really quickly using Raycast. And so there you go. That is a little look at how to get started with Raycast. We really have just scratched the surface. There's a lot of power under the hood and lots of different types of things you can do with this app. I haven't even gotten into the pro features yet. If you sign up for Raycast Pro, which is a paid feature, you can get access to organization settings if you want to share Raycast actions and settings with your team. You can even access AI and integration with chat GPT if you want. I'm still just on the free account getting what I can out of that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of cool stuff we can do with Raycast uh, that will, I'm sure, save you time and make your life a lot easier. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.